AI is improving at double exponential rates. Anybody who tells you we're going to wait 10 years for level four autonomy, I don't know if they get this double exponential. Hey, I'm Steven and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So I recently posted a video with some clips from Tony Seba discussing the electric vehicle disruption. I asked if you guys would like to see more of this content and the answer was a resounding yes. So here we are. Today, same thing. Watching a few more clips from that same 2019 presentation with Tony Seba discussing the autonomous vehicle disruption. And if you're thinking this is years away, you're in for a shock. So let's get into the video. But first, hey guys, if you live in the US and would like up to two free stocks valued up to $1,600 each, use the link in the description to Webull and deposit $100 in your account. Each of these stocks will be a minimum of $8 in value. So if you suck at math, that is a 16% ROI on 100 bucks. Not bad. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. Now, autonomous vehicles. You know, you hear a lot about autonomous vehicles. Um, everyone, seemingly, OEMs are investing in autonomous technology, not just Silicon Valley companies. Everyone, tens of billions of dollars going into this market. All you need is one autonomous vehicle. So autonomous technology is an operating system. If you consider the history of computing, operating systems, all you need is one. It's like a spouse. All you need is one, right? Um, and, you know, essentially Apple did not wait for anybody else to launch um, iOS, right? They just launched it. And the other lesson is that in the end, because of network effects, two companies are going to own 90 plus percent of the market. So Android and iOS, Windows and Mac, and so on and so forth. There's a third maybe, like Linux, but that's it. I mean, um, no more than that. And all you need is one company to get level four, not five, level four, which is geofenced, um, in order for this market to happen. I just want to expand a little bit on that point that you only need one. Of course, Tony is referring to the fact that full self-driving is software. Once you have a software solution, you can deploy that across your entire fleet instantaneously. And just imagine being the only company on planet Earth to have fully autonomous vehicles that aren't geofenced. Just for example, and you're able to deploy that to everybody instantaneously. What does that even do to the market, to prices, to the value of the vehicles? I mean, I just, I don't even know, guys. Like, let me know in the comments. What happens if that happens? Let's say Tesla is the first to solve autonomous driving and nobody else catches them for a couple of years. Let's say two years. What happens in those intervening two years to Tesla prices, production, demand? Like, what, what happens? I don't even know. Now, how expensive are they going to be? Isn't autonomous technology expensive? I'm going to show you the cost curve of, of com supercomputing, which is what you need for uh, autonomous technology. This is the world's largest supercomputer, most powerful supercomputer in the year 2000. Um, it was almost $50 million for one teraflops, one trillion operations per second. 50 million, one teraflops. Um, by 2016, you could buy eight teraflops, which is more or less what you need for level four, for 600 bucks. <laughs> That's an improvement of you know, nearly a million times, right? A million times improvement. And if you have an Apple 10, you already have five trillion operations per second for free. Done, right, for free. You can get basically the equivalent of $250 million of supercomputing, which is why companies like Nvidia and, and Tesla and so on are developing multi-hundred a trillion operation per second computing, right? Because uh, that's what you need. But if there's anything that I want you to walk away with is this. Artificial intelligence, learning, is improving not just exponentially, but double exponentially. Both the hardware and the software are improving exponentially. So the combination is double exponential. And this is an example, what Google Mind, uh, DeepMind did with Go. I mean, in three years, that's all it took them to go from playing 80s games to beating the European champion at Go. You could not do that before. Three years. Within five months, they beat the world champion, which is an order of magnitude um, smarter, right? Than, than the European champion within months. And then 
They took that, they shelved it, they restarted, they rebooted it with just the rules of the game. No human knowledge, just the rules of the game. Within three days, they beat the version that beat the world champion by 100 games to zero. And today's magic word is infer. Now, for those of you interested, I highly recommend there's actually a documentary that DeepMind, the developers of the AlphaGo software, created about this whole Go experiment, ultimately beating the world champion, destroying the world champion. I really recommend it. It's engaging, it's entertaining, and most importantly, it's very informative. This is really, really a way for you to understand what is happening with deep learning, okay? This is a new era, and if you don't have a good grasp on what can be done, how this process of learning is evolving and adapting and improving, and the rate that this is happening, you have no way of really mapping that understanding onto the full self-driving problem, the data, how important that is, and really getting a grasp on when this is going to be solved. AI is improving at double exponential rates. Anybody who tells you we're going to wait 10 years for level four autonomy, I don't know if they get this double exponential. Well said, Tony. Well said. And when I say autonomous technology, I mean it for everything that moves on wheels. Anything that moves on wheels is going to be autonomous. Um, so what is the disruption? The disruption is the three technologies, the two technologies plus the business model innovation. That convergence. So let's assume it's going to happen in 2021, that we're going to have level four autonomous technology that is uh, ready and uh, is approved by a regulator somewhere. So just to be clear, this is called transport as a service, and it's autonomous electric and on-demand transportation owned by fleets, not individuals owned by fleets, the day that autonomous technology is approved, so imagine Uber, autonomous and electric, the day that's approved, the cost per mile of TAS is going to be 10 times cheaper than the cost of owning a car. That day. So essentially that day, the decision that someone is going to have to make is, do I want to spend $50,000? to buy a car over the next five years, or do I want a $100 subscription to Uber or Lyft? No brainer, every time there's been a 10X uh, cost, there's been a disruption, and a quick one at that, every time in history. Um, and TAS is gonna be not just cheaper than buying a new car, it's gonna be up to four times cheaper than the operating costs of a car that you already own. So you may not get rid of that right away, but you will eventually. Just imagine that, 10 times cheaper than buying a new vehicle, and more importantly, four times cheaper to use transport as a service, on-demand transport in brand new or very new Teslas, that kind of a thing, autonomous vehicles, so much safer as well. Four times cheaper to do that than to continue to operate a car you already own. So you're not even factoring in purchase price, just operating costs. Four times cheaper. It's like the economics here are just mad. This is what we're talking about when we talk about a disruption. The huge financial incentive for people to transition to using transport as a service. I'm very curious. Let me know in the comments below. How many of you guys and girls would switch over to, let's say, $100 per month or whatever it is, a subscription-based service that is four, ten times cheaper depending on what we're talking about keep using your own car versus buy a new one how many of you would switch over to that service like that for the cost savings the convenience etc let me know in the comments so if that happens right then tesla just you know years later they said this is our business model and exactly you know what i predicted uh, they're saying 18 cents per mile my prediction was 10 to 20 cents so it's within the the right range for transport as a service um, so if, if, if this happens 2021, then by 2030, 95% of miles in America are going to be autonomous, electric, and on-demand. 95% for purely economic reasons. Not because of governments, for purely economic reasons, because it's going to be 10 times cheaper than a gasoline car or even an EV that's individually owned. Now, the implications of all of this are stunning, and I'm going to walk you through some of them. 2021. Now, if level four happens 2023, it's a shorter time frame, right? 2021 would be a 10 year disruption. It could be shorter uh, if level four is approved later. Implications. Peak car would happen around the time, basically the year before level four is approved. 
right? Uh, because no, nobody, nobody's going to buy a car except for fleets. So it's going to crash new car sales. Talk about some enormous implications. This is actually a topic I've thought at length on for many years now. In fact, more than 10 years ago, before I bought my first apartment, I was thinking about what do I need? And I decided not to buy an apartment with a car space, knowing that in a decade, decade and a half or so, there'd be fully autonomous vehicles and I would no longer want to own my own vehicle because of the economics. So this is something that's been on my mind for a long time. And on reflection, it was a great decision to buy an apartment that didn't include a car space. It saved me at least $100,000. And I guess it's time to come out of the closet on Tesla because obviously I've been talking about Tesla having enormous numbers of vehicle sales in years, right? Millions of vehicles per year sold. But if the global car market collapses in terms of the numbers of vehicles sold every year what happens to tesla well i guess it's time to fess up i think that tesla is really getting the lion's share of the new vehicle market over the long term i mean the lion's share not just a large slice maybe bigger than anyone else before no 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 i'm talking about an outsized enormous slice of course time will tell but I really see things going this way. I do believe new vehicle ownership is going to plummet. Now, look, my gut feeling, my intuition says it just it can't be so, Stephen. It just can't be so. But the numbers make sense. The analytical, logical part of my mind says, dude, I mean, all evidence is pointing to this outcome. Far fewer new vehicles sold every year because those vehicles are doing far more miles and therefore there's much less need. Obviously, it's going to take some time for some people to get used to the idea of using transport as a service. But when the cost is one-tenth of what it is to own a new vehicle, I mean... The U.S. vehicle fleet is going to shrink by about 80% because we're going to have cars running around um, 100,000 miles per year not being parked. I mean, we park our cars 96% of the time. I mean, that's a useless use of, of space. Um, so the fleet's going to shrink by 80%. The other implications, financial, every American family, by not owning a car and instead getting a subscription, is going to save about $6,000 per year. 6000 in our pockets per year. And again, we are back to the compelling economics. Just imagine the average family household out there. Mom, dad, a couple of young kids and a pet. That's really great. Do you think that they're going to want to use transport as a service if they know that it's going to save them literally thousands of dollars per year over ownership of a car? I mean, this is something that people are going to be really considering, even if the idea they initially, oh, no, 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 no. like, even if people are a little bit resistant to the idea of not owning their own car or using transport as a service, if they know it's going to put another $5,000 plus in their pocket, that could be another 5 or 10% of their household income combined in their pocket. This is a meaningful amount. This could pay for an entire family's groceries for an entire year. You could feed an entire family just from the savings of doing this. So when you think about the compelling economic case, it really makes sense. Some of this stuff that intuitively, like, oh, what do you mean? Car sales are going to plummet. No, dude, that's so crazy. But when you think about this at a widespread scale, I mean, it's pretty hard to argue. And what that means for the economy is $1 trillion increase in disposable income. $1 trillion. Now, that would be the biggest boost in the economy ever in history. And on top of that, because we're not going to drive and we're going to do other stuff while not driving, that's an additional trillion dollar in economic gains. Two trillion dollar boost to the economy. Now, I hate to point out the obvious here, but um, two trillion dollars is a reasonably large amount. Traffic accidents, we're going to save at least a million lives per year. I mean, cars are <clears throat> death machines, right? We kill 1.2, 1.3 million people every year, and we send 4, 5 million, 40, 50 million people to the hospital every year. That is going to go. What a great place to wrap things up on. Talk about an enormous disruption. Not only are people going to have thousands of dollars more in their pockets, more convenience around their transportation. They don't need a car space, parking, garage, etc. They've got more freedom. They don't have to f around finding parking if they live in a large city, those kind of things. And they're going to be far, far safer. It's winning all around. There's a link in the description to the full presentation. I highly recommend you guys check it out. And I'd love to know what you guys think. Will new vehicle sales collapse and fall off a cliff once or autonomy is solved and there's regulatory approval and who will be first to solve autonomy and what year will they solve it i'm stephen mark ryan this is solving the money problem and i love you all
And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Open a new Webull account, deposit $100 and you'll get two free stocks valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the rule at will, you'll either get Nike, GoPro or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe and don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching so thanks again.